A couple of months back, I saw the Netflix documentary, The King Who Never Was, about the killing of Dirk Hammer on August the 8th, 1978, by the son of the last king of Italy, the Prince Vittorio Emanuele of Savoy who was 41 at the time, and th he murdered the young German Dirk Hammer in his sleep, and was only 19 at the time, because the entire House of Savoy, and especially the last Italian king of Italy, collaborated with the Duke of Mussolini and his fascists during the Second World War. The King of Italy got extradited from Italy. Persona non grata, as they say. So here again, it's the internal war sort of in between the old world order, the king, which is a vertical rule, and the republicans. You know, the parliamentary system, parliamentary system, uh, which is a horizontal rule, and they kicked him out. It was not the people. You know? Where's the people? They're just dumb slaves. Yeah. So the king here is the father <clears throat> of, the, um, of the killer prince. So here we see Adolf. I mean, it's all aristocracy. Right? This one, Il Duce which means the duke. He was living in a castle, and his wife was an aristocrat. Adolf Hitler, he was always walking around with a, uh, the statue of Nefertiti, Queen Nefertiti of Pharaohs, and a painting of Frederick the Great. So it must be clear he's of the higher nobility, as his grandfather in Vienna, whom he never knew, Frankenberger. Um, he was, uh, of course, a part of the um, the upper nobility, and the real name of the of his family was Schickelgruber, and they gave him the name Hitler. Also, this guy Rudolf Hess, he flew to the Scottish nobility, the Duke of Hamilton. And the Duke of Hamilton, he uh, was part of the Scottish equivalent of the Order of the Garter. And um, I don't think he spent the rest of his life in prison. Of course he didn't. You know, these guys never do. And then Himmler, he also had his castle called the Wevelsburg, next to Paderborn in Germany, where they have a uh, this... Um, uh, this occult symbol of the black sun on the, um, because the Nazi Templars, you know, the, and the Templars, they were occultists, what they have from Pharaoh. So, <clears throat> his son killed the, um, killed the young German Dirk Hammer. So here it says the killer prince. So he's the son of the last king of Italy, whom you just saw with Mussolini and Hitler. And therefore, the killer prince of Pharaoh's house of Savoy was living in Corsica, France, where I have been filming for you 10 years ago, helping the Corsican Liberation Front. The videos can still be seen on my channel Gatsafrats here. So here's the title, and this is 10 years ago. And on my channel Gatsafrats, there's several videos I did in Corsica, together with the Corsican Liberation Front. So here it says, Swiss neutrality is for the elite only and not 
for you dumb slaves. And as always, to understand the actual situation and what really happened, we must dig deep into history and how Switzerland, as usual, is deeply involved in it all. So here is the Wikipedia about the Duchy of Savoy. And also Geneva was part of uh, the Duchy of Savoy, as you can see here. Look, and in their coat of arms, they even have a Swiss cross here. Or here, their flag. It's definitely a Swiss cross. Well, I mean, if you look at the... Um, if you look at the map here, I mean, it's uh, Switzerland is here, you know, and it's uh, it's like glued onto Switzerland, right? And um, so there are parts like here. It has a. Um, I mean, here you can see Nice is in it. And it was also a part of the Holy Roman Empire, as you can read here. So I'll let you read the rest. Yeah. Or you can find it yourself. So the Duchy of Savoy lasted 450 years from 1416 till 1860 and was part of the Holy Roman Empire, which was in fact a German empire. I hope you remember my video on the Holy Roman Empire and where the seven end times hills have to be simultaneously seven kings, and which happens to be the case in Switzerland. Die sieben Kurfürsten. So you can see that in this video here on my channel Homeland Security, the title Helvetic Horror Heidi, one year ago, which will teach you a lot more on the Holy Roman Empire because it's very important, because it has so much in common with the Duchy of Savoy and its killer princes and we can all see the swiss cross in the coat of arms of the duchy of savoy so here's the switzerland a white cross on a red underground and here it says savoy written in french savoy which is the same area as the duchy of savoy a white cross on a red underground and well, part of Switzerland used to be the Duchy of Savoy, and it's it's right next to, glued next to Switzerland. It's it's the same, you know. So here's a map of Europe. Here's England, Ireland, France, Spain, Germany, Belgium. Here's Switzerland, and here is the in the southeast of France and and. Uh, the west of northwest of Italy in a part of Switzerland was the Duchy of Savoy. You can read it here. And you see here also Nice, and Monaco, you know, all the, the elite are, it's all part of Savoy. And also Geneva was part of the Duchy of Savoy. And also Nice in France next to Monaco. All these favorite places for the elite of our pharaonic masters of the nobility. Therefore, the killer prince of Savoy got acquitted in several French courts while the young German expired in the hospital of Nice of the Duchy of Savoy, murdered by its descendant and here it says dirk hammer while dying in ease 1970.
78. This is an original picture. The French police in Corsica had all the proofs disappear. And by the way, the Corsican people themselves consider the French police as their enemy who occupy their island. So here you see the French police in Corsica. And here it says the killer prince of Savoy. There he is. And here his victim, only 19 years old. From the picture in the Netflix video, the prince's murder weapon was a U.S. Army World War II M1 carbine, caliber 30, 7.62 times 33 millimeters, with a very high stopping power, far greater than an M16 or M4. The M1 is a real one-shot, one-kill weapon, which the killer prince must have known, as each and every member of the nobility loves hunting. So here it says, the father of the killer prince hunting elephants. So here we see the same guy we just saw standing with Mussolini and Hitler and Himmler and Rudolf Hess, the King Victor Emmanuel III of Italy. They know all about rifle stopping powers and the, uh, the M1 carbine with which they hunted a human. And yes, they love hunting humans too, like this young German in his sleep. Pharaoh's nobility stand above all laws and always get acquitted. Like the rapist Prince Andrew, who you can see here, and many others, like his pal Jeffrey Epstein, whom you can see here. For which, therefore, when the nobility created the horizontal New World Order by their Knights Templars, it needed a neutral base where they could escape to in case of danger. Just as it says here, Swiss neutrality is for the elite only, and not for you, you, you dumb slaves. Which is exactly what the killer prince, Victor Emmanuel IV, did, and flew to Kstad in Switzerland, where he got full protection by the Swissies, just like Roman Pedolansky who also fled to Kstad. Just like the Sackler family, the Oxycontin manufacturers, also in Stad, and whose opiates murdered two million young Americans. And many Russian oligarchs like Dmitry Ribolovlev, a mutual friend of both Mr. Putin and Donald Trump. And Donald Trump sold him a $95 million palace in Palm Day Beach, Florida. And they're all hiding in Stad. And many, many more pharaonic criminals. So here it says the killer prince in Kstad, Switzerland. So this is a picture where he was a lot younger, apparently. I mean, look at the hair. And this looks like him just right after the murder or at the same time, you know. So he went permanently to Kstad in Switzerland, you know. 
Uh, so here he is after the murder. He's got nothing to fear, you know, because Switzerland is Pharaoh's base. And they all seem to be in the nest of Stad. You know, with Bedolansky, Russian oligarchs, the Sackler family, and the rest of them. Eh? Uh, nothing to worry about, eh? This is the typical Swiss neutrality, which is only for Pharaoh's elite. <sighs> and not for you, you know, the dumb slaves. It's like the American um, humorist once said, it's a big club and you ain't in it. So I went to Kstad, here's it, Kstad, uh, 10 years ago. And here's the title, Roman Pedolansky. So I went filming, um, I filmed this, his house and, you know, and some other stuff there. So it's on my channel, Gatsafrats, so if you want to see that. And here is my video on the Sackler family from the US who manufactured OxyContin and who also went to Stad. It seems they're all in Stad in Switzerland. So here's the title and here's the channel. And here's the Russian oligarch Dmitry Ribolovlev here to the left and his good friend Donald Trump. And this guy here, Trump, sold him this palace in Palm Beach, Florida for almost $100 million to this guy. And this guy is also living in Kstad in Switzerland. And he's also a good friend of Mr. Putin. So he's big time in the Kremlin report, considering the um, Trump's business with the Ruskies. So Dimitri here, who's living in Kstad, uh, here you can see his badge. He's also the owner of the most important French soccer club. I think Monaco is number one in the in the the, uh, the major league in France. Or I'm not into soccer. Maybe it's number two or three. Here it says AS Monaco and a crown, of course. And this guy is in Kstad. And uh, Monaco was uh, a part or next to the um, the Duchy of Savoy. And there's the Swiss connection again with Monaco and, um, and Kstad, Switzerland. And of course, they're all, it's all nobility. This one, this, this one too, I've, I've proven that to you from his mother's side. He's from a line of... Um, Scandinavian uh, kings and monarchs. He's related to the, the Queen of Denmark and the King of Norway, Trump is. And he see the Russian church and all this. I never understood why he's a hero for the American workers, uh, you know, as apparently this guy, he's playing in a completely different league than in the, uh, the workers' league, eh? So I really don't get it. And here you can see Trump's pal Dmitry Ribolovlev on the left, standing together with Prince Albert of the Principality of Monaco that used to have a Swiss guard in former times. So here you can see the ASMFC, that's the soccer club. FC, it means football club, M is from Monaco. And I think AS could be uh, Associa Association Sportive uh, in French. And it's all red and white, Templar's colors. And it has a crown, of course. You know, all pharaohs. This is a pharaoh, this is a pharaoh. And here it says Monaco. Yeah. And it's all, they're all hide their money in Switzerland. Uh, he's living in Kstad. So here you can read about Dmitry Ribolovlev. I didn't read the whole thing, but, uh, you know. Um, 
So I'm going down here. Yeah, it's about AS Monaco. Yeah, that's what it says. Association de football in France. Um, this guy is extremely rich. And here it talks about the Panama paper scandal. And he's also in the uh, the Swiss, uh, Swiss Secret, which um, the scandal started in 2022. Also, this German newspaper, Süddeutsche Zeitung, or I think it was Deutsche Südwest Zeitung, um, which triggered the, um, the Ukraine war. I already told you about it in my videos. Here, the United States. Uh, he owns apartments in the Central Park. And in 2008, Ekaterina Ribolevlev's trust bought the 18-bedroom Maison de l'Amitié in Palm Beach, Florida, from the American businessman Donald Trump. So 2008, that's in the middle of the economic uh, crisis, right? Eh? where Americans, they lost their houses. You know, this guy is just buying houses for $100 million. He also bought a house from um, in Hawaii from the actor Will Smith. Oh, I don't want to see you. Go away. And um, everywhere. And here's he, he's in Switzerland. He has a house, $135 million in Kstadt. He also has a house in Geneva. I know, the guy has houses all over the planet. Uh, philanthropy, yes, of course, yes. That's what Freemasons always do, yeah. I suppose there's some things for children, as usual. Probably, right? I hear Prince's Grace Hospital Center. A lot of kiddies there. It's always the same. So here you can see again how Kstad is being written, G-S-T-A-A-D. I put just a hyphen here, so normally in the word there's no hyphen, okay? So just to make you know that um, how it's been written, like, you know, and why they're all hiding, like the killer prince here. So even when speaking German, you'll break your tongue over the pronouncing of Kstad, which is not really German, and with no less than three consonants following each other up, a G, an S, and a T, Kst, more sounding like the neighbor's wife calling her cat in the evening, Kst, 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 Kst. Come, kitty, kitty, kitty. Kss, 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 kss. Kss, kss, kss. So here it says, kss, 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 kss. Oh, there you are. Kstad. You naughty cat. You were hiding in Kstad again after you killed the bird, didn't you? Kst, kss, 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 you naughty bastard. Hiding in Kstad, Switzerland's neutral base, for Pharaoh only. Kss, 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 kss. Kitty, 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 kss, 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 Kstad. And written in nice lapis lazuli color, as it should be. Here it says, busted in kss, 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 Kstad. Pharaoh's base. In the Alps, out of where they rule over humanity and where all the assassins hide and get full protection by the Swiss Nazi Templars of Octagon. Stad, come, kitty, kitty, we know where you are. So, I propose to make it easier on us to call it Gestadt, meaning G-Town, where G 
stands for Freemasons, as in their square and compass logo with a G in the middle, and Stadt for town in German, written slightly different but phonetically absolutely the same. Gestadt or G town, the Freemason town protecting all their big time hotshot pharaonic criminals. So here is the name of the town again where they're all hiding. Kstadt, you remember Kitty Kitty? Kstadt, which means actually in German because they're all towns, you know, and over the time it's being written differently, like in the Middle Ages or, you know. So Stadt, it's definitely Stadt. You know, that's why they had to pull this difficult thing, you know, like three consonants, G-S-T, which is, you, you, you never find this in German, you know. It's not German. So it definitely means G-Stadt, G-Stadt which means G-Town in English. And that makes perfectly sense, doesn't it now? So this is the Swiss neutrality, which is not for us, the slaves, but for our pharaonic masters only, to provide them a place of security where they can hide or have peace talks amongst each other in Geneva or Davos, when two ruling pharaohs or two nations have a dispute which they would like to settle. So here it says, Swiss neutrality swindle. And here you can see the killer prince again, right after he murdered a young man. For us, the normal people, there's nothing whatsoever where Switzerland is an absolute dictatorship where they can do with you whatever they want without any law protecting you and in a country where the local Swiss population are trained to protect their masters, to protect the Swiss banks and to protect all Geneva's NGOs like the Red Cross, the WEF, the United Nations, the World Economic Forum and the rest of Pharaoh's world governing organizations. This is the true essence of Swiss neutrality which is for the masters only and here it says swiss neutrality is for the elite only and not for you dumb slaves so in the picture it says here templar safe house 1291 in octagon in the swiss mountains and as they were forbidden in france they changed their the Templar flag into this here, which is also the um, uh, the cross of the Hospitallers, which is a white cross on a red underground because the Hospitallers, they took all the belongings of the Knights Templars legally. So, and when the Knights Templars set up the new system in 1291, which they called the New World Order, they needed a secure place for all of Pharaoh's nobility to feel secure, like a safe house for the royal house or Per A of Pharaoh, where they can go skiing in winter, do some tax evasion, or put their pharaonic offspring in a super rich boarding school. In Pharaoh's Utopia, the Swiss beast, home of the devil. Here, of course, you see Prince Andrew, 
And here it says, Prince Andrew owns a £17 million sterling chalet, skiing chalet in Switzerland. Here you can see it. So apparently there are a lot of elite sexual predators roaming around in Switzerland, like Prince Andrew, uh, Pedolansky in Stad. This one here is in Verbier, which is also in Switzerland. And I suppose um, among the Russian oligarchs, there are quite a few sexual predators as well. I suppose it might be uh, honest to say that we might assume that, eh? The Swiss beast, home of the devil, where Pharaoh's nobility have their perfect slaves, called the Swissies who are trained like a German shepherd police dog, ready to kill and murder for their pharaonic masters, where their Germanic, Alemannic tribe was the first Germanic tribe to collaborate with the Roman Empire, whereas other Germanic tribes, like the Frisians or the Saxons, never collaborated with Rome. And here it says, Swiss watchdogs for the elite, and how they are protecting Davos and the WEF World Economic Forum. And one of those Germanic Frisians who never collaborated with the new Rome was the father of that young German Dirk Hammer, murdered by the Prince of Savoy in 1978. His name was Reiki Geert Hammer, which is a Frisian name, although he was born in another part of Germany. So I suppose by his name that he was of Frisian origin. Reiki Geert Hammer was a medical doctor, a physician, who practiced over 25 years, owning several clinics. But when his son Dirk Hammer got murdered by the killer prince, he developed testicular cancer because of the trauma of a father losing his child. He then developed cancer studies based upon trauma triggering cancer and a new form of healing, which he called the new dramatic medicine. So here's the man. It says Dr. Reiki Geert Hammer of the new Germanic medicine. Then the Swiss said that his cancer treatment was no good, which brought him the Swiss terror upon him and his family, culminating into years and years into various European prisons until he finally died in 2017. So here you can read about Dr. Hammer. And here it says the Swiss Cancer League described Hammer's approach as dangerous, especially as it lulls the patients into a false sense of security so that they are deprived of other effective, effective treatments. So here you can read about him, about his life here. Yeah. And uh, about the Germanic new medicine, it says he died. Um, I know this is about his son Dirk, who died in 1978 by the, the Prince of, of Savoy. There he is. Um, I, I, I might show you here the. Um, about him as well at the same time, so you can read about it. He was also a member of the P2, Propaganda Due, very dangerous Freemason organization. Um, there it says Masonic Charter. 
I might want to go down a little bit here. There it is. Uh, Propaganda Due was a Masonic lodge founded in 1877. Oh. Uh, the Grand Orient of Italy. Why, why the Orient? I mean, we are in Europe. I mean, what's the Orient got to do here? You know, we're being governed completely by the Orient, completely invaded. You know. So here it says he was the son of the last king of Italy and the Duke of Savoy, well, etc., etc. You can see again, it's it's really it's a royal house, eh? Oh, there's more. Yeah, there he is. And they were exiled, you know, they couldn't stay in Italy because of the... Uh, and uh, I'd already told you about this, the House of Bourbon, two Sicilies. When I made that video about the... Uh, uh, about the Mafia in, uh, in Sicily. Yeah, it's about Dirk Hammer's death. He never spent a day in prison, you know. And here he got imprisoned again in 2006 because of corruption and being with the mafia. And uh, there was a, a microphone in the prison where he admitted to have murdered uh, Dirk Hammer. But yet, he never went a day in prison, eh? Well, how is this possible? Hey, eh, Swissy? So here we're back at the uh, Dr. Hammer Wikipedia. Uh, we were here, the Germanic New Medicine. Uh, here it says somewhere how he went to prison. Oh, yeah, here. Hammer's license to practice medicine was revoked in 1986 by a court judgment, which was reconfirmed in 2003. As he continued to practice, Hammer was investigated uh, several times over allegations of malpractice. This guy was a doctor, a physician, you know, a doctor in medicine. He had several clinics. Uh, he also did some um, inventions here, which you can read here somewhere. Uh, he was jailed for 12 months in Germany from 1997 to 98 and served the prison term from September 2004 to February 2006 in Fleury-Mérogy in France on counts of fraud and unlicensed practice of medicine. Yeah. Well, of course, he didn't fraud. Just had a new way of healing people what the, um, the, um, the, the lobby in Switzerland of the, um, the pharmaceutical lobby didn't really like. And this is why the Swissies, you know, yeah, response by medical authorities. The Swiss Cancer League of the Swiss Society for Oncology, Swiss Society for Medical Oncology and Swiss Institute for Applied Cancer Receipts say that no case of a cancer cure by Hammer has been published in the medical lit literature nor any studies in specialized journals, reports in his book lack the additional data that are essential for medical assessment and the presentations of his investigations at medical conferences are scientifically unconvincing. Well, why did the Swissies do that? And later on, I come back to this here, what happened here. But first, why did the Swissies do this? Why did Swissy do this? Well, remember that the two biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world are the Swiss Roche in Basel and the Swiss Novartis also in Basel, Switzerland, who of course saw their sales diminishing because of Dr. Hammer's natural Germanic medicine to treat cancer. Here it says Novartis is number two, Roche, number one. And right after the pandemic, Novartis could buy back 52 billion euros or dollars, which is almost the same, to Roche. And they actually are one in the same company. So they made billions of billions of dollars through the, uh, the corona pandemic. Pharaoh's poison 
pandemic. And they got very, very, very rich because of it. And right after the pandemic, Novartis could buy back $52 billion to Roche of the, of the shares. So they're actually, they're in the same town. It's one in the same company. Only Novartis takes all the risks and Roche is the head company, which is very strategically. So it says the world's two biggest pharmaceutical companies are both in Switzerland. Well, this is technically impossible. How is it possible? This tiny, tiny country that the two biggest pharmaceutical companies are both in Switzerland. Technically, this is impossible, you know. So there's something fishy going on. Yeah, I already told you about it. What's really going on? So here you can see it, Novartis. This is the one, it's one company, Novartis and Roche, you know. Officially, there are two, but, and this is the one taking all the risks. So here you can see this. Bloomberg, Novartis to pay, to pay 390 million to settle US kickback case. Novartis hit by scandal over Japanese drug studies, probes, uncover altered research data. Swiss giants stand by heart medicine, Diavan. Financial Times, Novartis faces potential South Korea sales ban. Prosecutors seek suspension of some medicines sold by Swiss Group amid illegal rebates probe. Uh, Reuters, Business News. I mean, this is old. Look to 2015. Uh, you know, it's still going on. US seeks up to 3.35 billion in Novartis kickback suit. And I showed you in a video how they did um, medical experiments on uh, on Polish homeless. Uh, there were, I think, there were twenty three who died. Really, they died, you know. But I mean, a Polish homeless is not an elite in Kstat, you know. So uh, it's just collateral damage. Yeah, they are highly criminal, you know. And they did the same thing with their banks. It was Credit Suisse taking all the risk. And the UBS, you know, the, that's the, the big bank. And and we saw it this year, the Credit Suisse, they, um, the CS, they um, they fell, they don't exist anymore. And it went over into um, um, UBS, which means the United Banksters of Switzerland. Yeah, They always do the same. It's, they're so sly. And of course, you should go and see this video here, Corona Gate. It's not mine, but it's very good. Uh, Big Pharma, Switzerland, and organized crime. And I, I made a couple of uh, a few hour videos about the um, the Swiss pharmaceutical industries and how they killed uh, Polish homeless, you know, for their experiments. And they're probably in one of my channels, and so. You go and look them up uh, yourself. Uh, you know, I made more than a thousand videos and it's all a bit hard to find. Um, so you go and look at that. And remember that the same Swissies protected the killer of Hammer's son in Kstad, the G town, while at the same time discrediting his father and even put him in prison. So the father of the victim went to prison. The killer prince never went to prison. And the father went to prison because of the Swiss cancer organization. And this guy never went to prison because he went to Switzerland in Kstad. So the Swissies are all behind it, you know, from, as always as always. And as Hammer was a physician and not an historian, he blamed the usual scapegoat for it all, the jaywalkers, where in fact his real tormentors were Swissy and Pharaoh's nobility, the usual suspects. So here it says in Wikipedia, what I've shown you before, here was about the Swiss Cancer League and all that, remember? So here it says, the, um, the Jaywalker conspiracy theory 
Hammer purported that his method is a Germanic alternative to mainstream clinical medicine, which he claimed as part of a jaywalker conspiracy to decimate the non-jaywalkers. In this, Hammer repeated the um, anti-jaywalker claims of Nazi physician Gerhard Wagner, another Wagner, eh? like the Wagner group. More precisely, Hammer asserted that chemotherapy and morphine are used to mass murder Western civilization. Well, they've got other tools as well, eh? While such treatment is not used in the jaywalker base, or how do they call it, the JJ base. Hammer promoted the idea that most German oncologists are jaywalkers and that no jaywalker is treated with chemotherapy in Germany, which is probably because of religious reasons, right? And, uh, well, etc., etc. You can read it yourself. And of course, you know, if I have to use the the word jaywalker, I've got nothing against these people, not at all. But uh, because of the censorship, as usual, as, uh, as soon as you use the other name or the J the JJ base or whatever, you know, they take off your video by the machines. We are in a technocratic era, and it's full of censorship. So I'm forced to do this. And there's a lot of jaywalkers who visit my videos and who understand this. And um, so, of course, the ones who give the jaywalkers a bad name are the jaywalker nobility, you know, uh, just like uh, the um, Herman Herman de German, he he was he grew up in a castle of a Jay Walker um, aristocrat. You know, I sh I show you the picture right after. So, but these are the usual suspects, you know, Switzerland and Pharaoh's nobility, and of course there also is a Jay Walker nobility. Who always give a bad name to the rest of the jaywalkers, which the jaywalkers call the Erev Rava. So this is the sad thing about it all. So here's that picture again of Hermann the German, and he grew up in a castle of the jaywalker nobility. He, his name was also Hermann. I forgot his last name, but I made a video about it somewhere, and he he. He grew up in the castle of, I think, was Weldenstein, and he was the owner. He lived there as well. So it's all nobility. This is nobility. This is nobility. I shouldn't say Hermann the German because he wasn't really. You know, look, it's all Templar stuff here. Here, Templars. It's all over. And this is the Seal of Solomon. It's also of the of Pharaoh. And the nobility has nothing to do with the, with the normal jaywalkers. You know. But the jaywalkers don't understand. They, they don't even understand their own history. They don't. They really don't. Not even their priests. Well, they in the least, you know. I feel that Dr. Hammer was a good man who wanted to do good to humanity and that we should help those sidetracked Germans and others so they won't lose their time and energy on the usual scapegoat and in the future will direct their energy and good intentions on the real enemy of mankind because there are good people who are unfortunately sidetracked through disinformation who need our help to pierce through the veil. Swissy is always in it, somehow, and the Swiss neutrality is only for the elite of Pharaoh's nobility and not for us, their slaves. And their G-town, Gstad, seems to be a nest for the biggest criminals of Pharaoh's organized crime. Swaziland is the base of Pharaoh. Ain't that so, 
Swiss E. For those who haven't seen my previous videos, here I explain in two Brightian films all the code words I use to avoid censorship. So here is part one entitled Censorship Vocabulary and here part two Forbidden Words. On my channel on Brighton, which you can see here, brighton.com, uh, my channel is this one, Gure, and then the second one, Gure. And for those new to my channel who don't understand how I got to um, the, the, the Faro connection and the, uh, the Templar connection to Switzerland. So in the Swiss B series, which you can see here, I explain how we're being ruled by Pharaoh. Here you can see part one, and there are 11 parts. So this is part one here. Here's the title on my channel, Gure here, the same channel. And if you watch here, in the description underneath the video, it says more. And here you got part two, part three, with the uh, the URL, and part nine, part 10, only part 11 I haven't put it in it yet, but 11 is also on the same channel here. So it says the new words, or there's a conspiracy theory that hypothesizes, I should write it with an S boys, not with a Z, a secretly emerging totalitarian world government. It's not a conspiracy theory, as I explained to you. It's a very old thing by the Knights Templars when they founded Switzerland in 1291. They made the horizontal rule and called it the New World Order. And the Old World Order is the old vertical feudal rule by the king. So... And this was, um, it's in German, uh, about how I got uh, arrested again and again by an anti-terrorist court. And finally, I wish to express my sincere condolences to the Hammer family. I like watching Netflix documentaries because they tell me stories I didn't know about and just giving basic information. Only Netflix never goes into the deeper reasons behind the story, like deep state issues, for which you might just as well say deep Swissy or deep Swampler which is a combination of Swiss and Templar, the Swiss Templar or Swempler, which sort of carries the automatic phonetical similarity of the word Swindler when being evoked by the word Swempler. The word Swempler simply transmits the feeling of Swiss Templar Swindler altogether. Swampler and the Swamplers. So here you see um, the president's house. Here it says deep state, deep Swissy, and here it says deep Swampler. It has SW from Swiss and Ampler from Templar. So let's call him Swampler. So when seeing a Netflix documentary, my brain synapses get activated, seeing the deep swampler in the whole shebang, thus adding to the quite shallow Netflix documentary, seeing the real connections behind the screens and literally behind the screen, so to speak. So is the guy literally looking behind the screen. And it says Deep Swampler behind the screen. 
And so did it happen concerning a Netflix documentary, which story became a real international scandal, about which there was a lot of talk in the media. And I'm going to tell you what really happened in that Netflix film, Making a Murderer, and who actually pulled the strings. The story talks about Stephen Avery and his cousin Brandon Desai being locked away forever in US prisons, where the system deliberately threw away the keys afterwards, making sure that these innocent American men will never come out anymore. Okay, so far, nothing new in the US. So here it says, uh, Netflix, I think this is Stephen Avery, and here it says, Swampler Conspiracy in Swiss Consen, which is the state where it happened, which I call Swiss Consen. The video or documentary, Making a Murderer. While watching the Netflix documentary, it's projected the same funny Swiss atmosphere upon me when the Swissies or Swamplers put me away for five and a half years in several high security prisons for political prisoners because I wrote articles on the Swiss Nazi banks in international newspapers and because I made historical documentaries proving that Switzerland was founded by the Knights Templars in 1291 and who later became the Nazi Templars and all financed by the Swissies. So here you can see me surrounded by the Swissies and the Swamplers. And here it says the Swampler mob. And I have to use like words like Swampler or Swizzy, you know, to avoid the censorship of this free world. Here you can see the prosecutor of Swiss Consen called Ken Kratz, which is a Swiss German name. And here it says typical Swampler behavior. And I experienced exactly the same kind of Swiss behavior by the Swiss mob as when I heard the US state prosecutor Ken Kratz speaking with this sweet, innocent tone and smiling through his teeth while he was making things up in this Swampler conspiracy against Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey in order to lock them away forever. Thus lying all together in this typical organized way, which I know all too well from my own experiences in the motherland of Wisconsin by the name of Switzerland with similar organized liars of the Swiss police, Swiss justice department, Swiss lawyers, Swiss psychiatrists, Swiss witnesses, and Swiss prison guards conspired against me while smiling through their teeth without a scratch on their conscience as if they were really believing having universal justice on their side, just because I damaged Switzerland's credibility internationally, for which, in their wicked state of conscience, I had to pay for, making them believe to follow a just cause. So this is me with my beer in my hand. Here's the mob from the motherland of all evil. And here it says the Swampler mob of Switzerland. And I saw 
the exact same thing going on in the Netflix documentary Making a Murderer and the very same Swissy atmosphere being projected from out of the screen. In German and in Swiss German, the word Kratz, exactly as in the Swiss consens, prosecutor's name, Ken Kratz, is being used in the saying, Es kratzt mich, meaning, I don't give a damn. And Kratz, in German and in Swiss German, means a scratch. So here it says in German, es kratzt mich, which means exactly in English, I don't give a damn. Here it says, kan kratz, there he is. Just follow the money trail and you'll end up in Switzerland and the Swamplers. This here was probably what the prosecutor of Wisconsin was thinking by himself. He is Ken Kratz and he was, or Kratz, and he was probably thinking, it is not good for my career to pay $36 million by my department. And the state of Wisconsin didn't want to pay out the millions of dollars to Mr. Stephen Avery, who had a lawsuit of $36 million in compens compensatory damages running against the state of Wisconsin, for which the crooks in the Wisconsin Justice Department and their prosecutor, Mr. Ken Kratz, didn't want to take any responsibility for and pay out. Just as the Swissies and their banks didn't want to pay out one billion dollars to the jaywalkers in 1995. You all remember the affair with the whole catch reparations lawyer Ed Fagan and Swiss security guard Christoph Meili in 1995. He came and visited me once, 20 years later, Christoph Meili did, and we had dinner together. Nice guy, and he did a good job. It says, Christoph Meili versus Swiss Nazi banks, 1995. Here's Christoph. I met him when he was like 20 years older. Well, same story of paying back money. And then all the lying starts by the swamplers when there is big money to be, to be paid out concerning their eternal and perpetuous crimes by the swamplers. So here it says, here you see the money trail going to Switzerland in the Alps. And here it says, things getting a bit hairy at payback time. As you already know, the name Kratz, as for prosecutor Ken Kratz, KK, well, there's just one K missing, eh? And the KKK is also Swiss. I've shown you this. So his name, Kratz, is a Swiss German name. And so are all the other 15 names of the perpetrators, whom you can all find in the Netflix documentary. And their names next to Kratz are Lautenschlager, Lehmann, Lenk, Vogel, Kuscher, Rohrer, Griesbach, Wiegert, Fassbinder, Hermann, Sturm, Halbach, and even more. All of these swamplers of Swiss descent working for the Swiss Consen Justice Department, Swiss Consen Police, and around this dirty affair collaborated in this conspiracy against the two innocent Americans, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. So 
Actually, this is part from a website where in Swiss Consen, they say it themselves, they, they call that Little Switzerland in Swiss Consen. And here are the Swiss German names from the film. You know, here, Kratz, Lautenschlager, Lehmann, Lenk, Vogel, Kusche, Rohrer, Griesbach, Wigert, Fassbinder, Hermann, Sturm, Halbach, etc. Well, you might say, you know, the German speakers here might say, okay, well, we have these names also, or some of the names also in Germany. Well, let me tell you, this is where the dangerous thing starts. You know, and the Germans getting all the blames for everything. You know, people thinking, oh, this is German. Well, hell no. You know, they are Swamplers. You know, they're Swissies. And the Germans, as usual, they get all the blame for it. Yeah. So this here, with all the Swiss flags and the sort of a Swiss Pope here, the Swiss guard probably, this here is America. And I call it Swiss Consen, in a town New Glarus. They write it here. They, they even write it themselves about America's little Switzerland. Right? I'm not joking here, people. This is very serious and it's very dangerous. Because the swamplers, you know, they all stick together, you know. So here it says, I read a little bit for you here. Uh, New Glarus is located in the heart of green country in southern Wisconsin. Its rolling hills dotted with small towns, farms, and woodland pastures are much like the alpine farmlands of Glarus, Switzerland. When you arrive at the village entrance, you will quickly understand its popularity as a destination. Well, it wouldn't be my, my popularity. Eh? New Glarus is America's little Switzerland. And um, for over 175 years, the beautiful little community of New Glarus, Wisconsin, has been a magnet for Swiss settlers. Well, I'll let you read it yourself. You know. um, so I'm not joking here, people. This is very serious. And there are two innocent Americans paying for it. You know. So here's the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the uh, the website here. Oh, there it is. Little Switzerland, people. And it gets worse. You'll be shocked what's coming next. Etymologically, the name of the U.S. state, Wisconsin, is Swiss Consen, where officially 1% are Swiss Americans, and probably even much more. So officially there are 61,134 Swiss Americans living in Swiss Consen today, but in reality there are probably even more and they usually go for all the key positions. So here's the website, uh, Swiss Americans. You can read it yourself. Here, regions with significant uh, pop Swiss populations. And so I guess here, Swiss constant somewhere. Uh, maybe we can see it. Oh, here it is, Swiss Consum. And here yeah, the population. So in Swiss Consum, there are 61,134 Swissies, eh? Swiss Americans by numbers. And it's probably much, much more. So here you can see Wisconsin. Uh, 9%, um, 1%, almost. So, here are some more communities settled by Swiss immigrants. Well, Bern is the capital of Switzerland. You've got Bern, Idaho, and here Kansas, in Bern, Indiana, Bernville, uh, Denver, of course, uh, Grüt. 
Grütli Lager. Der uh, Grütli. That's um, where the uh, where Switzerland started off, you know, with these uh, with these three cantons in 1291. And here Helvetia, Hohenwald next to uh, Interlaken, Lucerne is a town, a big town in Switzerland. Neuchâtel is a town, New Bern, New Glaris, remember, that was called the Little Switzerland. Another New Bern, uh, Steinauer. Vevey is a town in, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the valley, valleys. And of course, Zurich, the financial capital of, uh, of Switzerland and probably also of, uh, of Europe, together with Frankfurt. Some world famous Swiss consonites are the biggest US traitor of all times Aldrich Ames and the serial killers Jeffrey Dahmer, Ed Gein, and Mary Brunner, where Dahmer and Brunner are also Swiss German names. Mary Brunner was one of the Charles Manson serial killers who were living at the Spahn Ranch in California of George Spahn, which is also a Swiss German name. Well, imagine Roman Polanski n now living in the G town Stadt, Switzerland. Coincidence? And then there is also the Charles Charles Guito, which is also a a French Swiss name because they got a French speaking part. Hey? Here you can see him. Um, and he was the assassin of the twentieth president uh, of the United States in in the 19th century. And this is probably where Swissy got the whole line of Swiss presidents all over the, um, over the US. You know, so they got their own man f as the next president, you know, like, um, you know, Eisenhower, Obama, um, Herbert Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover, real names were Hoover, you know. I guess this is where it started, you know. So they, there's the Swissy, who murdered the um, American president. So this is from the website here. I'll let you read it yourself and just do a quickie here. You know. So a list of people from Swiss concert. You know. Here's art and literature, Frank Ackermann, economist. Well, remember, you know, the Swiss Ackermann, who is from the, uh, from the town of Wallenstadt, uh, where, the, um, where the Seven Hills and the Seven Kings are in Switzerland, the Sieben Kurfürsten. He is the bank of the, um, he is the director of the, um, of the German bank, the Deutsche Bank. A very important influential guy uh, i forgot his first name but his name is also ackermann so typical swiss name probably annenberg yeah you know, and the rest so well you can here you got hamilton you know the duke of hamilton where rudolf hess flew to um, in England, so you can read it yourself, yeah. And did you know that the role of Lucifer in the 1968 Polanski film Rosemary's Baby was played by Anton LaVey, the founder of the Satanist Church? And a year later, Polanski's wife, Sharon Tate, was satanically murdered by the Manson gang 
called the family. And as Polanski is living in Kstad, Switzerland, the common denominator in all this, again, is the Swiss beast, home of the devil, where it somehow always relates to. So here it says in the book, it's also known that Lave acted as technical consultant for Polanski's film Rosemary's Baby, a story of modern-day Satanism in New York City, in which he also played the part of Satan. Wow, charming, isn't it? And at the end, they all went to Switzerland. Maybe it's not so much of a coincidence that Swiss con sin ends with the word sin. And a sin it is, indeed, to conspire against two innocent Americans by the names of Stephen Avery and Brendan Dessey. Therefore, we must stand together and take down the Swampler abomination and free these two innocent Americans. So here again, the prosecutor, Ken Kratz, smiling through his teeth, as you can see here. And here it says, Swiss con sin. So someone call their lawyers and send them this video for understanding. One of their lawyers is the great Texan lawyer, Kathleen Zellner. And here's her phone number. Some freedom-loving Americans should do this. Call her up and send her this video. Here you can see Kathleen Zellner. I'll show you the phone number. So here it is from her website, how to contact her. Um, here are some emails. I can't use my email at the moment for security reasons. And I can't call up either because I'm far away and uh, my phone credit won't uh, let me do this. So here again, another email of hers. And here's uh, th two phone numbers and a fax. So please, some freedom-loving Americans, send her this video and tell her about it. So we can stand up all together. And in fact, in this affair, the body of the mysterious victim, Teresa Halbach, was never found. Halbach is most likely living under another identity in the G-town Kstad, or Davos, in Switzerland, where all members of the Halbach nobility of von Bohlen und Halbach went to the noble boarding school Lyceum Alpinum Tuots near Davos and for the elite only. We all know how members of Pharaoh's elite nobility just disappear and change names and identities. And it always boils down to Switzerland, their base of Pharaoh, who have their colonies all over the globe, like Swiss Consen, where they grab the various key positions like justice, department, police, politics, army, secret service, etc. So here is the girl whose body they never found, so they can't possibly, you know, condemn or sentence these two guys for murder if there's no body, you know. Uh, her name, Teresa Halbach, Swiss, you know, and in Swiss Consen. And here is Stephen Avery, and here it says Brendan Desi, who is his nephew. So, you know, the minute I heard the name Teresa Halbach of that woman that disappeared, and two young Americans are sitting in prison for that, you know, it rang a bell, you know. 
here it says, Halbach. Harald von Bolen und Halbach. And actually, their real name, here it says, oh, I'm sorry, it's only in German here, but I'll find you some more in English. Here it says, um, er verbrachte seine Jugend auf der von seinem Urgroßvater. So his great grandfather was the industrial Alfred Krupp. So the real name of this Halbach family, and probably Teresa Halbach as well, and I find it real funny, you know, that her family don't even want to know what really happened to her, you know, if there really is a killer, you know. It's very suspicious, you know. So, and uh, in this respect, the, the, you know, the Netflix documentary was really well done, you know. It really gives a feeling about, you know, the um, what's really happening in the American justice, you know. So the real name of this Halbach family is actually Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Short Krupp. As I told you, nobility in the new age, they just take one part of their real name, like Halbach or just Krupp. You know, and he went to this uh, school in Switzerland. Schweiz here is Switzerland. And the name is Lyceum Alpinum Tuot. It's a really funny name, you know. So, and oh, here it is, the um, a portrait of the family Gustav Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Hey, Teresa Halbach, yeah. And um, Harald is the fourth from the left. So, this one here is Harald, this one here. Yeah. So... It's a family portrait of the of the family Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. You know, that, that's the real Halbach name or the real Krupp name. They're hiding, as I told you. Look at all these old paintings. You know, this is the this is Pharaoh's nobility. And it gets worse, people. It gets worse, I tell you. So well you can those who speak uh, German, I didn't even read the whole thing, you know, they can uh, read it, and wasn't there an English translation? No, there wasn't, so, I could actually do a whole video about the Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach family, or dynasty, but this video is not about this, this video is about uh, two innocent Americans, so I just keep it short. Eh? And uh, yeah, it says here Lex Krupp, there's a lot of interesting thing. Was a document signed into uh, by Adolf Hitler, uh, personal company, etc. Yeah, Adolf Hitler. So Krupp, the Krupp factory was the uh, the German steel factory. Of the and weapons manufacturer, factory of First World War and the Second World War. He was convicted uh, for crimes against humanity. Oh. But he probably never did it a day in, in prison. Right? Only innocent Americans go to prison. These guys will never go to prison. You see him during the uh, Nuremberg trials. And uh, so this is the Halbach family. And I'm sure I could find a lot more. Uh, you know, there's a Alfred Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach Foundation. It's a very powerful family. Eh? And of course, they're also in Wisconsin. Eh? as they went to these uh, Swiss uh, schools, which I'm going to show you as well. Some interesting facts. So here that's um, Wikipedia website about the Lyceum Alpinum Tuot, funny name, eh? in Switzerland. It's near here, near St. Moritz. Another 
one of these uh, elite towns next to Davos and Kstad. They're about and Geneva, of course. But uh, in the mountains, there are like three very well-known elite towns, St. Moritz, uh, Davos, and Kstad. You'll hear a lot of Russian being spoken here by the uh, oligarchs, you know, financing the wars and the death of Ukrainians. It says in Switzerland. <laughs> Clean Switzerland, eh? So, yeah. Well, I'll let you read it yourself here. Yeah. And um, here, yeah, they, they, they got even, they got counts. You know, it's for the elites, it's for pharaohs, nobility. All these Swiss boarding schools, it's for pharaohs, uh, nobility. You know, the, why are they all in Switzerland? You know, like uh, Institut Le Rosy, Collège Alpin International, Beau Soleil, they all have a coat of arms, you know. Let um, show it like this, yeah. You know, they all have a coat of arms with with knights and all this. This one too. And uh, Eglon College, College Institute of the Rosenberg. That means the mountain of roses. Probably has a meaning, eh? Well, roses is uh, usually you know it's uh, connected to the uh, Knights Templars, you know, because they are. They have a uh, red cross, you know. So, and these are the um, these are the most expensive schools in the entire world. How come everything, you know, the most expensive, the biggest banks, the biggest pharmaceutical country, everything is in this little tiny country, right? This one here is a count. Anton Wolfgang Graf von Faber Castell uh, is also the owner of a company. They all are owners of companies, you know, because uh, you are their slaves and Pharaoh's nobility, you know, everything belongs to them. Here's Ferdinand Piech uh, from uh, Volkswagen. He was the director, here it says, of Volkswagen. Anton Piech. Uh, son-in-law of Ferdinand Porsche, uh, you know, uh, Gutz Georg, uh, a German actor, uh, well-known, Chris von Rohr, nobility, von Rohr, you know, they're all well-known people. Right? So, the Swiss boarding school well, the, uh, where the Halbach or Krupp family or, or Krupp von Bohlen und, uh, und Halbach family you know where they where they went to school you know. so here again is that um, Halbach school where the Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach where they went to Lyceum Alpinum Tuat here is their coat of arms. Well, it's not very clear. I'll show you another picture. And here you see the concept of three, and here's a king. And here it says something. So, I mean, the Halbach family, so I wrote down here, Halbach family, question mark. Are they here? I mean, it wouldn't be too far off, you know. There, there are too many connections. There, uh, it's a nobility, Halbach family, and there's so many people disappearing in Switzerland anyway, you know. Polanski disappeared in Switzerland, uh, the Sackler family of the Oxycontin, the, uh, the killer prince of Savoy, and all the Nazis like uh, Dr. Joseph Mengele, Klaus Barbie, uh, Eichmann. And then all of a sudden they pop up somewhere in a completely other place in the world like uh, Argentina or South America. But first they all disappear in Switzerland. Eh? So this really isn't too far off eh, to assume that uh, Teresa Halbach you know, might be in Switzerland. Um, 
as well because um, Swiss Consin is definitely a Swiss state in the United States of America, and the whole affair, you know, you can if you, it's 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 being all it's a setup, you know, against two innocent Americans, and all everything leads to Switzerland. So here is a better picture of their logo, and it says Mensana in corpore sano. It means a healthy mind and a healthy body. That's why they were, you know, playing hockey and, and everything there in this elite boarding school. Here's the concept of three. There are three trees who look like pyramids, you know, and the whole thing is like a pyramid set up. And here's a sort of a king, and it says SL. Well, SL is also always for the elite, you know, there's Saint Laurent, uh, they put it on a Mercedes SL, and a lot of more things. And uh, so, I just show you, there are even our counts in this school, and probably also princes, and uh, which they don't even announce, you know, on the list, you know. So, and here again, it says Halbach family with a question mark. As the Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach, they went here to this school. And there are a lot of them, you know, they their names are just Krupp or just Halbach. Because in the new times, the nobility, you know, they're hiding amongst us, you know. It's a secret rule, you know, it's not open anymore, you know. We don't know really who's ruling us, you know. and. Um, for the new world or the horizontal rule of the republic, they do this. You know. So here it says Alfred Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach, and it is in Nuremberg, nineteen forty-seven. So here he is, eh? and so the Halbach dynasty. It's a very powerful dynasty. And they are quite capable of, um, I mean, they've always been doing, you know, crimes against humanity, you know, as in uh, Wisconsin, as uh, during the Second World War, the First World War, it was Hitler's and the Nazis and, um, and the Emperor's um, metal factories, Krupp, and they just say Krupp. You know, or they just say Halbach. And um, the Halbach family, um, I suppose it is quite, we might assume, seeing the amount of lies and organization and, and um, conspiracy against two honest, uh, innocent Americans, you know, um, this Teresa Halbach, uh, we might just as well assume she is of that uh, very powerful Halbach global uh, dynasty. So here we see another one of the Halbach dynasty. This one is Gustav Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Uh, you see him together with Mr. Hitler. Uh, this is the financer um, of the Nazis who also completely disappeared, might as well be in Switzerland or Swiss Wisconsin. He has got a Templar cross or a Swiss cross even on his uh, on his vest. As they all go to that uh, Swiss uh, boarding school for the elite. Eh? Very the Halbach dynasty is a very powerful dynasty. So here it says Hitler in Krupp von Bohlen Halbach factory. Here you see Hitler. This is Goebbels and the financer. I forgot his name. And um, so this is the 88 cannon, I suppose. Yeah. The um, notorious 88 cannon with which the Allies had a lot of problem. So the... Um, it's the same as the uh, Mengele of Dr. Mengele, the Angel of Death. It's a very powerful dynasty, you know, they're, in, they're, they're billionaires, incredibly rich. And they can, you know, they've got all the funds, you know, to make someone disappear. Or even their own, you know, if they want to have another life. 
just as the Halbach family. You know, this is an extremely powerful dynasty. <clears throat> and they can make someone disappear, even if even one of their own members of their own family, if they see an advantage in it, like uh, thirty six million dollars of the uh, compensatory damages. I mean, all crimes against humanity, it's always two parties in it. You know, Pharaoh's nobility and Switzerland, their base. And Krupp von Bohlen Halbach, it's, uh, it's a very um, aristocratic uh, name. Actually, it's Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. Nowadays, most of Pharaoh's nobility have left out the most parts of their long names, like Krupp, von Bohlen und Halbach, and just call themselves Halbach, like Teresa Halbach, who just disappeared and most likely never got murdered. Just follow the occult symbols of which I will show you some more, and the money trail leading to Switzerland. So, yeah, I changed it here. Hitler and Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach factory. And, you know, everything belongs to Pharaoh's nobility. And they got all their money in Swiss Nazi banks in the base, in Pharaoh's base. The Swiss beast, the home of the devil. And they just, since the, uh, the Knights Templars, or their Knights Templars, made the Republican system, um, there's just a new slavery system, a new feudal system of auto-sufficiency or self-sustainability. You know, you get a amount of money every month, and you just see it for yourself. You know that you can um, you can arrange everything and buy anything you need. And at the end of the month, you got nothing left anyway. And at the end of your life, you got nothing left. You know, it's a um, that belongs to the New World Order system by the Knights Templars of uh, auto sufficiency or self sustainability. Nothing has changed really. So then these guys here, they're all of the nobility. You know, of course they are. Ah, oh, here's Krupp himself. I recognize him. Uh, Alfred Krupp von Bohlen und Halbach. And um, nothing has changed, really. I mean, it's still Pharaoh's nobility ruling. And they are behind all the wars. Eh? You're just a dumb slave. In Swiss consent, there are even towns called Swiss, which you can see here in Wikipedia. And Swiss Consen has even places called Little Switzerland, as I showed you before, for the town New Glarus, as there already is the old Glarus in eastern Switzerland. So he can read about it. Yeah. And look, the town hall, they don't have an American town hall. It says here they got a Swiss town hall. You know, there's Swiss law here. Just like what they did with uh, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. They got Swiss laws. You know. So here it says the Swiss town hall. I believe it, you know. So, yeah, the Swiss town. That's amazing, eh? I mean, it's written here, eh? the Swiss town hall, you know. Don't you think it's like a mistake or they say, no, 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 no. They, they probably say, no, no, that doesn't mean that. Everyone can see what it means, eh? They got Swiss laws here and not American laws, eh? In Swiss Consen, 
town called Swiss. Uh, the capital city of Swiss Consen is Madison, where there is the capital building of Swiss Consen in the form of a Swiss cross, and even in the exact same color of the Swiss cross, namely white. It says, Madison, Swiss Consen, the Swiss cross capital. See, it's a white Swiss cross. You know, one, two, three, four. It's so obvious. The Swiss Consen capital cross building is directed in all wind directions, north, east, west, and south, indicating the Swiss strategy of the Nazi Templars or Swemplers, that in the motherland, in the Alps, those who speak Swiss German infiltrate Germany to the north and do their wrong doings over there. And those who speak French infiltrate France to the west. And those who speak Italian infiltrate Italy to the south. And those who speak Reto Romanic infiltrate to the east. So here's the building, the capital with an O, in the capital with an A, Madison of uh, Wisconsin. And here is another picture of it. And here it says north, west, east, and south. And I mean, can anybody imagine, you know, like the French and the Germans, and on top of that, Italians, you know, like grouping together in the deep Middle Ages of 1291 and saying, oh, we love each other so much, let's make a country together. No. They still don't like each other very much, you know, even in Switzerland, those who speak French and those who speak Italian, those who speak German. Well, they get, of course, better along than a real German, a real French and a real Italian. I mean, that's obvious. Eh? So there must have been a, a power on top of that, over that, you know, that put these language groups together. And these were the Knights Templars of Pharaoh's nobility, which I explain in my video series, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. I'm going to give you all the proofs of that. And in this Swiss cross building is the Supreme Court of Swiss Consent, where the two innocent Americans were tried in their Supreme Court trial. Huh. Anyone here believes that the Swamplers of Swiss Consen left them a chance? So here is the Wikipedia page of the Swiss Consen Supreme Court. And where are they seated? Yeah, the Wisconsin Supreme Court sits in the main hearing room in the east wing of the Wisconsin State Capitol. You know, the Swiss Cross building, eh? In Madison. There's Madison, all the same. And here is the uh, the courtroom. Or well, part of it. You see, there's a lot of nobility here. These are not normal people, eh? Uh, marble. Ah, oh, here's the sun hieroglyph. Yeah, how many pillars are there? One, two, three, four, eight. Octagon. Uh, the, the pillars of the Republic, Octagon, you know, Knights Templars. And um, here is their seal, you know, with the all seeing eye. Here, once again, uh, an eye. And um, it shows the uh, scales. Well, I can't see it in this picture here, maybe like this. It show the, uh, well, I can't see it. Well, here are the scales of uh, Ma'at, the Pharaonic goddess, with the uh, the 42 principalities. 
um, in which also the Ten Commandments, you know. So, um, yeah, location once more the Swiss Cross building in the state capital with an O. And Madison here is the capital with an A. I don't know why they did that, eh? Don't ask me. Um, here the, the Chief Justice, Tiegler. You know, another Swiss German name. There's this famous uh, Jean Tiegler who wrote about the Nazis in Switzerland. And then he became, he, he got a job for the United Nations in, uh, in Geneva. And then it was all done. Uh, so, uh, here, Roggenzack, another Swiss German name. Oh, wow, well, look at that. Eh? Okay. Get out of there, Roggenzack. Roggen, it means rye. You know, the grain and zak, it means a bag. Uh, it's a bag of rye, hey? Oh. Oh, I better not say anything. Huh? Yeah, here, the page about the Attorney General of Wisconsin. So, who is sitting in the Wisconsin Supreme Court? Well, there's this guy here. He's the Attorney General of Wisconsin. And... Here's the logo, which is quite interesting. I'll show you a better picture in a minute. And always look at the signs, eh? And where is he? You know, look, the seat is in the Wisconsin state capital. There we go again, the Swiss Cross Building in Madison, Swiss Consen. And so, on. so here are some former ones of these here. You can watch it yourself. The, the names are quite interesting, you know, like, um, where is he? You can always, you know, find like aristocratic uh, names. Because, of course, they're all from Pharaoh's nobility. Eh? There, there's no. There's no doubt. Uh, they have all the key positions, you know. So, the Attorney General of Wisconsin in the Wisconsin Supreme Court. So, let's look at the Attorney General of Wisconsin seated in the Swiss Cross Madison State Capitol. And let's analyze his logo. So here it says, a Wisconsin Department of Justice, the Office of the Attorney General. And here is his building. This is where he is residing uh, with north, west, east, south. It is a Swiss cross. And here in the logo, on the left hand side, we see the hangman with a rope three buttons on his jacket and a square on his belt for the concept of three and four saying square and compass for all the initiated ones to the right we see the grave digger with a pickaxe four buttons and a circle on top of his hat for concepts of three and four, same thing. And where the circle stands for the compass, and four for the four corners of a square. In the middle is a rat, that's us, and all innocent Americans tried in the Swiss cross, capital of Swiss Consen, like Stephen Avery and Brandon Desi. In the middle, we see the belt of the Order of the Garter, about which I've told you all about in a former video of mine. And on the garter, 
it says e pluribus unum, meaning out of many, one, which also trumps Q represents the garter and it's WWG1WGA for where we go one, we go all, which is just another way of saying one for all, all for one, of the Nazi Templars and the Freemasons. So here, the Q of Trump, it is the garter, which we just saw in the logo of the Eternal Attorney General in the Capitol Swiss Cross building in Madison, Swiss Wisconsin. It says, where we go one, we go all. You know, you know Trump is not representing the, uh, the workers' class people. You know. So I don't understand it. I don't get it. How come he's so popular under the American workers, under the ordinary man? Because he's not one of you. And here in the motherland of this all, it says on the ceiling of the parliament, it says unus pro omnibus omnes pro uno, which means all for one and one for all. Or one for all and all for one. And here in the Swiss cross, you see the same round thing as in the capital in Madison, Wisconsin, where there's this round thing in the middle, you know. And I think these are in it as well. So it's everything is in it, you know. And this is the system of the uh, the new system of the uh, the Knights Templars, also Pharaoh's aristocracy, who made a new system that in, instead of only one king ruling, you know, which was the vertical rule or the old world order, they have they made the new world order and the republic where there is tens of thousands, if not hundred thousand. Aristocrats or pharaohs nobility ruling the country, and this is why we have to, they have to say things like uh, one for all and all for one, because it's a horizontal rule. You know, they're all at the same level, sort of, or where we go one, we go all. They're all brothers now. That's why they're all fraternities. You know, so this is the garter. You know, they put it around their legs. I, we just saw it in the logo of the Attorney General. So, any anybody wants to know who's ruling there? Hmm? So, i show it one more time to you in a better picture. Here's the rat, that's you. Here's the hangman. Here's the grave digger uh, with this round thing on his, uh, on his hat and sort of a, a, a drop of whatever. Uh, he got four buttons. This one got three buttons and a square. So it says three and four. And um, here's the order of the garter, where it says pluribus unus, meaning out of many, one, which is the same as where we go one, we go all, or unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno, one for all and all for one. And now look at this pyramid. So here, in this pharaonic pyramid, there are nine inversed pyramids of death, standing for the nine gods of Egypt, called the Great Ennead. And there were also nine original Templars. The condemnation of these two innocent Americans is part of a bigger occult ritual and maybe even satanic, as all the occult symbols are there. It's probably all connected to the seven hills and the seven kings in Switzerland, what I explain in this video here, on my other channel, Homeland Security. And the title is Helvetic Horror Heidi. So it is about the, the seven end time hills in Switzerland. So here's the coat of arms of the Windsors with the unicorn and the lion. And here we see the garter again, the belt 
Just as we just saw, this is a symbol, it even says Oni Swakima Lipans, which is a symbol of the Order of the Garter, which we just saw in the, um, the Swiss Cross capital of the Attorney General in Madison, Wisconsin. You know, the very same thing, the same belt, you know, which they put around their leg, you know, it's really perverted. Huh? It's a fraternity, you know, what else they do? They probably, um, I mean, I wouldn't do that with a brother, you know, if I had a brother, like, you know. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, who's ruling in the uh, in the capital in Madison, Swiss Wisconsin, eh? Who's ruling, eh? Americans, eh? Well, it's more sort of like uh, make America great Britain again. So, this is the title here. It says the Order of the Garter on the same channel as this video here. And, well, check it out yourselves. I already told you that the Swissies always go for all the key positions in society, especially the ones within the authorities, like the Swiss American presidents Herbert Hoover, the real name Hoover, Eisenhower, and Obama. Swiss American head of the CIA, Alan Dulles. Swiss American FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover, real name Hoover, Swiss American Watergate's Bob Haldeman, etc., etc., which I've already proven you in my other videos, telling you this since 13 years. So here it says, Deep State in Washington, Deep Swissy. Deep Swampler. So guys, you better not do any speeding with your pickup in Madison, Swiss Wisconsin. If you don't want to end up in the Swiss Cross building with a lifer and a garter tied around your neck. And here you see the round thing and this is the other round thing which I just showed you in the Swiss Parliament. It's exactly the same. So here you can see the comparison. This is on the Swiss ceiling of the Swiss Parliament, Unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno. And here you got these circles, you know, five. Well, this one in the middle is the this circle, if you look at it from the top, from the capital. And here the other four, only they're not like here, on, the, uh, on, on this here, but they're like here. But it's the same thing. And you know why? Because this thing here has a lot of squares in it, and this one here too, for the square. So it needs also a circle for the compass, so it says square and compass. So you got a lot of squares here in the capital, and a lot of compasses. If you look at it from the, uh, from the top, exactly the same thing as in the motherland, Switzerland, and in Swiss Wisconsin. Right, you need any more proofs? And this is just the tip of the alpine iceberg, as 90% of an iceberg is invisible and underwater, just as the Stephen Avery, Brendan Dessy case. And this alpine Swiss iceberg has led to many major shipwrecks throughout history, like two world wars with the third coming up, if you don't mind me calling a world war an alpine shipwreck by the Swamplers. This guy here, a leader in the Hamas, is Mushir al-Masri, and he was in Swiss Parliament in February 2012. And here it says, terribly annoying. And everybody here in Europe I talk to is tired of hearing about the Middle East for the last 70 years. 
as if Europeans and our problems don't exist in the media, which is just as in the Bible, which is an Oriental book for the Orientals only, and which stops at the Mediterranean because the God of the Orientals didn't see any Europeans. Here it says Celtic tribes, one of the European tribes, like the Celts and the Germanic tribes. So, in this respect, the Bible is like today's media. Quite logical, of course, as both come out of Pharaoh's nobility in the background and who already had a writing long before anyone else in order to manipulate the minds and hearts of the people and the slaves, both in the Bible as well as in its prolongation called the media. Yes, Pharaoh's media are modern day's extension of the Bible and both only talk about the Orient. So on the left side it says Salam Alaikum, which means peace be upon you, and the Philistines sending Qasam A rockets with a peace message. And on the right side it says Shalom Aleichem, which also means peace be upon you, with bombs on Gaza as the ultimate peace message. And we can see that these words share the same origin in both languages, Salam or Shalom and Aleichem or Aleichem. Due to the global censorship, I'm forced to call them Philistines on the left side and jaywalkers on the right side, which are not at all derogatory expressions with no offense to either one. Okay, am I safe? Got it. And in the Orient, they all talk about peace, where the jaywalkers say shalom or Shalom Aleichem, meaning peace, and the Arabs say Salam Aleikum, also meaning peace, which seems to be only out of strategical reasons. Because as soon as everyone believes the peace deal, the actual killings can start which for the Philistines comes out of the takia, for dissimulation or hiding one's true intentions. And I guess the jaywalkers on the right side have similar words for it, as they both come out of the same Abrahamic source. Remember, Salam Aleikum or Shalom Aleikum, it's the same. So they probably have a word like, so here it says takia for the um, hiding the Qasam A rockets under Salam Alaikum. And here, probably something similar like takia. So I wrote down here similar. I'm not, I don't know the, the word of it. And for the, uh, for the, uh, for the bombs on Gaza here. Yeah. Takia. Very important. Very important. So here you can read about the Takia in Wikipedia. In uh, the Philistine religion, I say it like this because I'm not even sure anymore if I can, if I'm, if I can due to the censorship, if I can pronounce this word. You know, they all need help. Help us, please. And, you know, you can't say anything anymore. You know. So, in the Philistine religion, takia or takia is a precautionary dissimulation or denial of religious belief and practice. Generally, takia is the action of committing a sinful act 
such as feigning unbelief for a pious goal, like war, you know, like saying salam alaikum and at the same time, you know, sending a lot of missiles. You know, this is takia. Hiding one's beliefs, you know, there's no more belief, you say, it's war. Hiding one's beliefs has been a feature of the Philistine uh, religion since its earliest days and is acknowledged by, uh, by the religious ones of virtually all pers persuasions. However, the use of takiyah uh, varies, especially between Sunni and Shia uh, religious people and Sunni religious gain political supremacy over time and therefore well, etc., etc. So it's a dissimulation or a denial of religious beliefs, like Salam Alaikum, and uh, in order to make war and to conquer. You know, like, I don't want to say the, I don't want to pronounce the harder word for it, you know, which you all understand, because then my video might be taken off, yeah. In spite of the fact they're all crying for help, but you can't talk about it. The same for the jaywalkers, you know, can't say anything anymore. Which is really a shame, you know, it's really... So, well, that was the whole thing, and you can look it up yourself. Takia. Yeah, you know, very important. So, these are very refined uh, communities, you know. A very refined civilizations in the Middle East. Um, as Westerners, we have no idea how refined they are, you know, like the takia, the dissimulation or the denial of uh, the re belief and, and other things, you know, very refined. Eh? Also, the food is very refined. It's not like a Western, you know, potatoes, carrots, and a, and a meatball. No, no, no. Very refined. Everything is refined there. You know. Takia. Then, after the initial peace simulations of the Takia, the eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, butcheries can start. Where after both cry to the world, Please, someone help us. Which you can see here with the blooded doll here on a Philistine demonstration in Switzerland with a Swiss senator standing aside them. And here as well. So here it says, here you see the Philistine flags all over. Uh, this must be in Switzerland because of the th thick jackets. And here it says, the Swiss senator with Hamas. And here it says, bloody takia doll. This is also part of the takia, the dissimulation. You know, on, the, on the one si hand side, you know, really looking for troubles and shooting missiles. And on the other side, afterwards crying uh, with a blooded doll and, you know, to make us cry and all that. So here's the Swiss senator and the Hamas here. They even made it into the Swiss parliament here. Here you see the wood, the alpine wood of the Swiss parliament, of the, the, uh, the inside. And here you see the, uh, the Philistine church, uh, the big one in, uh, in the JJ base. Yeah. Here it says madness and a lot of dead bodies of soldiers in an airplane. And all this. 1,000 air one nights of nightmare implies that America or Europe needs to help them, literally demanding young Americans and young Europeans to die for this utter madness. While these Orientals continue with their my God is bigger than your God, or we are bigger victims than you are. So here it says, my God is bigger than your God. So on the left side, the Philistines, and on the right side, the jaywalkers. In France, though, 
I met a lot of helpful Muslims who picked me up hitchhiking, always using the occasion to ask them if they had ever read the Quran, and they all said no, every single one of them. So when I see how in Sweden they burn the Quran, I don't really see the commotion when burning a book that even the Muslims themselves don't want to read. I, by the way, read the entire Quran from beginning to end for expanding my knowledge on the whole commotion around it. So here it says most Muslims never even read the Quran themselves. And here you see them burning the Quran in Sweden. Here it says Stram Kurs. Well, I suppose as in German Kurs, it means the, uh, the course, the direction. And the rest I don't understand probably means like a steady course or something, you know, like sailing a Viking ship or something. The Drakkar. Oh, these Viking boys, eh? And here you see the burning of the Quran. So I, I don't understand the commotion around it. I mean, if they don't even, the Muslims themselves want to read the book. What's it all about? Consequently, and due to all this madness, last month, on Monday, October the 17th, 2023, three Swedish soccer fans were randomly gunned down, leaving two Swedes dead by a Muslim in Belgium because of the Quran burnings in Sweden. And I seriously fear that the Muslim assassin here never even read the Quran himself either, looking at the statistics. You know. So here it says, Muslim murders two random Swedes. And here it says something, I suppose it's Swedish, I don't understand it. And here you see the guy. Well, uh, definitely doesn't look like a book reader. Not in my eyes. It's more like a worker. And um, a worker, you know, disillusioned of being in Europe. And, uh, and here you see two pharaohs putting flowers here, you know. Two politicians of pharaoh's nobility who are in fact the ones who set, who set it all up, you know, who set everything in place, you know, like importing masses of these ones here. So these ones here are responding with burning a book. And in the end, you know, they set it all up, you know, having people fight each other, like divide and rule, you know, remember. That's what the nobility ever always did. And then... At the end, you know, seeing their result, putting some flowers, you know, and making some new laws against everyone, including us. Here it says the usual J runners. And on October 7th, 2023, we could also see the J walkers do another runner, as usual. Just as they ran away from Egypt, then ran away from the Romans in Jerusalem, then ran away from the Spanish Inquisition, then ran away from Switzerland in 1776, didn't defend themselves in World War II from the Nazi Templars. And contemplating this all, I must admit that it is very likely that soon you will run away again from the promised land, because apparently it is too tempting to do a runner.
all the time. Listen, jaywalkers or jayrunners, if you have a rave party going on, only five clicks from the border, separating yourselves from the ones who want to annihilate you out of existence. You would definitely want at least to have some goodies on you or in your car so you can protect yourselves. So don't make it a global affair that you yourselves categorically refuse to defend yourselves and refuse to take responsibility for your own lives and instead believing that some god or your government or your own army will help you. You should be knowing by now that no god will help you, that your Erevrav priests lie, that all these Freemason politicians lie. And just as in World War II, governments betray you, just as the Nazi Templar government did and lulled you asleep with a false sense of security. Your Israeli Freemason government did exactly the same in order to make you feel safe using the same Arabic takia against you. It says, J runners, J runners, Jerusalem, the massacre of July the 14th, 1099. And this is why the French Republic, they took it as a national holiday, July 14th, because the revolution was also a big, a huge massacre. July the 14th is always a massacre. Now, Listen carefully, jaywalkers. Stop crying immediately and stop asking others to send their sons to the godforsaken Middle East and die for you. Because it is not our fault that you don't defend yourselves. Neither was it the responsibility of the German people to save you from the Nazis, as the vast majority of the Germans were too afraid of the Nazis themselves in order to stand up. And the rest of them were entirely brainwashed during the preparation period of the Hitler Youth, where those Nazi Templars raped the minds of defenseless ten-year-olds through vicious propaganda. And this, well, it's not even 10 year old, it's a six or a five year old. Eh? These kids had no chance at all, you know, to avoid being raped in the mind. It says here, raped in the mind by nobility's Baldur von Schirach, of Pharaoh's nobility, and he was a pink list killer and a pedophile. He hardly did any prison time at all after the war, or, or maybe none at all. You know, this is Pharaoh's nobility and the Nazi Templars. So, dear J runners, my advice to you is don't trust your government, don't trust your army nor police. And don't trust your priests with gods that are always absent anyway. It says, don't trust your government. And this here was George Carlin, or is George Carlin, who says, governments don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking that is against their interests. They want obedient workers, people who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork, and just dumb enough to passively accept it. Jaywalkers, do as those great Bielski brothers did during World War II, who were secular jaywalkers and believed in nothing 
believed that no one except themselves and common sense without all the religious hocus pocus and therefore they survived. Watch this great video, Defiance, to see their story and then do the same. So here it says the Gaza Metro, which is the tunnel system underneath Gaza with a beer at the end of the tunnel. And here it says stop tunnel vision. And tunnel vision means that you don't see things clear anymore with a limited view as you're so stressed out focusing on one thing only, which happens a lot to soldiers in war. And when you get chronically stuck in that tunnel vision, it's called PTSD for post traumatic stress disorder. And here, a couple of beers might help you see the end of the tunnel. So, my advice, though, to the Philistines is use your tunnels to get some beer over and just chill out. Then, disconnect from your murderous obsessions and shove some electrical guitars through your Gaza metro and make some music, preferably heavy metal. We do this in our part of the world and it works really well. So why can't you do as anybody else, grow up and make something out of your lives instead of constantly trying to make everyone else's life a misery. Okay, got it boys, let's rock and roll and at least pretend to be happy. And this is my tunnel vision for you. You see, there's tunnel vision and there are tunnel visions. So here you can see the Gaza Metro. Here you can see the Philistine heavy metal. Here it says stop tunnel vision. So there is tunnel vision and there are tunnel visions. So here it says in every war there are three parties. So in this case there are the Philistines, there are the Jaywalkers, and there's Pharaoh. So I myself choose no party in this affair, neither for the Jaywalkers nor for the Philistines, because there is a third party who are the real enemy, Pharaoh. Just as in the Ukraine war, there are not just two parties, Russians and Ukrainians. No, there are three parties, Russians, Ukrainians and Pharaoh's nobility, who the latter have their base in Switzerland. So, he, of course, these two, Mr. Putin and Mr. Zelensky, they are pharaohs, but it's just a good image to show Russia, you know, and Ukraine and Pharaoh. So here you can see Mr. Putin with his worthless tanks, with the, uh, the barrel of the tank, you know, like, uh, like um, being bent down. And here you see Zelensky, Ukrainian flag. And getting all the goodies from NATO in the uh, in the Ukrainian bag, eh? And here, of course, Pharaoh, uh, all the generals, all the politicians, all the presidents, all Pharaonic Freemasons. And here it says again: every war there are three parties. So it was therefore in two thousand and seven that the Swiss government decided to collaborate with the Philistines and their Hamas, which you can read here 
in this official announcement of the Swiss Seven Heads of the Beast, which directly led to five years later for the Swiss to invite the Hamas into Swiss Parliament, about which I already made some videos about it 10 years ago, and which you can find on my channel, Hatze Frats. So this is official. Here it says the, um, uh, the Swiss Confederation here with the, the, the inverse uh, Templars flag. Here it says the Federal Council portal of the Swiss government. It's official. You can find it all, you know, in the internet here. Near East, an agreement signed between Hamas and Fatah. Here again. An agreement signed between Hamas and Fatah. And here you can put it on any language you want. Like here's German, French, Italian, and English. So I put it in English for you. And I just scroll down a little bit. There we go. That's better. Now it's blue. So here it says, Switzerland is willing to cooperate with the Palestinian government. Now, what is the Palestinian government? Here it says, Hamas and Fatah on forming a national unity government. So instead of writing down here, Switzerland is willing to cooperate with the Palestinian government, we can at the same time, just as well, we can read Switzerland is cooperating with the Hamas. I mean, that's what it says, people. And again, they call themselves a neutral state. Well, now I told you in my last video, that's only for Pharaoh's nobility, for the elite, for us, the people, there's no neutrality. And then the Swissies, they even financed this so-called Palestinian government. I mean, write down Hamas, you know, they send money to Hamas. And with the money, <laughs> what did they do with it? You know, they built tunnels and uh, and they they bought all the um, all the things they needed for the the missiles and the guns and and also America the and and the uh, the European Communion the European uh, the EC European Community they also sent loads of money so here we can see what's exactly what's going on you know. I told you, there are always three parties, and the third party is Pharaoh, and this is Pharaoh's base of the beast. And, you know, they just make two peoples fight each other. You know, they, they give all the guns, all the money. The same thing in the Gaza war, as in, uh, in the Ukraine war, you know, with the NATO giving all the weapons and uh, and... Iran giving weapons to the uh, to the, to the Ruskies and uh, missiles and, and and here also apparently Iran supplying weapons to the uh, Gaza. I don't know if it's true, by the way, but I don't. I do know it's true that the U.S., European Community, and the Swissies they give money to the Hamas, which was the government from. Uh, February the 9th, 2007 onwards, you know, and, and, and this is still valid for the Swissies, you know, they still have this agreement until today, you know, nothing changed. So the Swiss parliament, they call it Bundeshaus, Bund, it means an alliance, or well, I told you, it's an alliance with the Knights Templars, it's not alliance with the people. Here are the phone numbers, here's the email, so if you want to have some fun, you know, here's some more about it, which you can read, you know, well, there was a little bit more, but it doesn't really matter. So here's what it says, eh? Swissies are financing the Hamas. They're financing the war. They're financing the murders of October the 7th. And of course, in conjunction with the uh, the Israeli government, because they're the same pharaohs, eh? So, wakey-wakey, everybody, eh? Philistines, wakey-wakey, 
Europeans, the white race, wakey, wakey, the jaywalkers, wakey, wakey, everybody wake up, eh? The Asians, the Nubians, the Ukrainians, the Ruskies, everybody wake up, eh? So here you can see the Swiss Senator Geri Müller again, whom I've showed you just before with the uh, the blooded doll, the um, the Philistine doll, poor child, poor doll. So, and here it says, Bern, Switzerland, February 2012, in Swiss Parliament. So he invited um, the Hamas uh, into Swiss Parliament. Like this one here, Sayed Abu Musameh, Mushir al-Masri, and Kamis al-Najjar. And here the Swissies use the same technique as with their banks, sacrificing the Credit Suisse, taking all the risks, then taken over by the UBS, or the pharmaceutical company Novartis, doing all the criminal activities with Roche right next door as the ever-standing pillar. The very same in Swiss Parliament with Swiss Senator Geri Müller taking all the flack for inviting the Hamas headshed into the Swiss Parliament, thus boosting Hamas's morale, making them more bold with the support of another country, thus augmenting the probability of another terrorist attack, but not in Switzerland, as they are friends now. Get it, folks? Ah, this is very intelligent, eh? So here in February 2012, you can see the Swiss senator with the spectacles and Moshir al-Masri together holding a backgammon gaze with a gold mosque popping out. Fancy a game of backgammon, do you know? Mushir al-Masri, a top Hamas spokesman, is saying things like, we shall uproot the jaywalkers with our axes, knives, guns. We will chop off their leaders' heads. <laughs> Fancy another game of backgammon, Mr. Mushir al-Masri. So, it is the guy whom we just saw in the Swiss Parliament smiling next to the to the Swiss senator who really boosted his morale. So he started saying things like this, you know. Here it says, senior Hamas official Mushir al-Masri uh, praises, uh, praises recent attacks in, in the JJ base and declares we will uproot the um, the jaywalkers with our axes, knives, guns, we will chop off their leaders' heads. And this is um, by the uh, by the Philistines saying it themselves here again. Uh, this is on memory TV. So here in May 7, 2022, rally in support of Hamas Gaza leader Yahya Sinwar that aired on Al-Aqsa TV, Hamas Gaza. Hamas MP Mushir Al-Masri, you know, the guy who was in Swiss Parliament, yeah, saluted the perpetrators of the recent deadly terrorist attack in the, Israel, in the, in the JJ Bay cities of Ilat, Tel Aviv and Hadera. He said that the, Palestine, the Philistines will uproot the Jay Walker's thorns with their axes, cleavers, knives, guns, and nails, adding that the Philistine sword will not be sheathed until Israel um, JJ Bay's leaders are beheaded. Al Masri declared, We love martyrdom. It's noteworthy that Hamas Gaza leader Yahya Sinwar, who is actually the, the most sought after guy at the moment, recently encouraged the Philistines to carry out attacks against uh, jaywalkers with guns, clever, cleavers, and axes. Well, the rest, you're going you're gonna to look at it yourself. So this is a pal 
of the Swissies, eh? They really boosted their morale, like, you know, inviting them to into the Swiss Parliament, you know, and then, you know, they really got really very bold after that, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's like a game of backgammon, you know, it's like, uh, it's like with the takia dissimulation, you know, you just you pretend to do something else and just smile in the Swiss uh, parliament and then here, you know, he he wants to kill everyone, like, you know, and don't think, you know, that uh, w the the white race we are not part of the uh, of the ones uh, he he wants to be killed. Eh? They just want to kill everyone. You know, we're also into the uh, in the crosshairs by these guys. Uh, mm -hmm. well, I tell you that. Eh? So the picture inside the Swiss Parliament again with the alpine wood here. The Swiss senator and Mushir Al Masri, you know, he is nicely smiling. You know, that's takia, you know, dissimulation, eh? And here you got the backgammon gaze. You know, it's like a chess game around the uh, around the big mosque here. So, and to the left we can see Doctor Syed Salem Abu Musame, one of the founders of Hamas and PhD in Islamic religion. In 1989, Hamas leader Abu Marzouk made Abu Musame general commander of the Gaza Strip. And to the right, Dr. Kamiz Yavdat al Najjar, a physician, probably taken into the delegation to Switzerland to beg for money for the poor children of Philistine, considering the medical status of the operation by these Hamas hotshots. Huh. Very smart move for this backgammon game and its obvious takia. So here it says the victim contest with a blooded doll, doll here in a Swiss protest for the Hamas by the Swiss senator Geri Müller, whom we can see here as well, together with uh, Mushir al-Masri, with the, the Begemen case. So they're using a lot of dolls, a lot of toys to make a point, you know, Begemen case, a blooded doll, you know, the takia, yeah. Well, the whole thing seems to be a victim contest where all parties want to portray themselves as the biggest victim where the UN and the international community function as a mother with two spoiled children saying he started she hit me first and even the whole thing sounds serious and intelligent on TV but really, do we need this infantile behavior in the 21st century? Be aware of Swissy here, showing a blooded doll in order to spark more wars. So the Swiss Nazi banks and the Swiss pharmaceutical industries can make more money. Remember how Swissy did the same in 1923 and inviting Adolf Hitler to Zurich, Switzerland, and finance him, just as today inviting the Hamas to Switzerland. I've shown you this in many of my videos. It's just history repeating itself, and always the Swiss have their dirty little fingers in it. Therefore, Two months ago, on August 30th, 2023, many Swiss celebrated the centennial of Adolf Hitler being in Switzerland 100 years ago on August 30th, 1923. I guess 
after World War III, Swissy will do the same and celebrate the Hamas centennial in Switzerland 100 years from now. So here you see Adolf, a guy with a gun in his pocket. And it says 2023, 100 year centennial. Hitler in Zurich, August 30th, 1923. So two months ago, it was exactly 100 years ago that this event happened. Altogether, in conjunction with the Swiss Grey Eminences, François Genou and Hans Huber al Suisseri, the latter in 2002 coming to our house in Switzerland and threaten me and my very young children, about which I made these videos here 10 years ago on my channel Gatsefrats. François Genoux was a friend of Amin al Husseini, the uncle of Yasser Arafat. And this Swiss grey eminence was also a personal friend of Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler. So here it says, Channel Gatsefrats, 10 years ago. So you go to my channel, Gatsefrats. And then you scroll down until you see the one-eyed Odin. And then watch these four videos here. So you can also write down the title so I don't have to do it all again. You know, it's a lot of work. So this guy here is the Swiss grey eminence François Genoux. Extremely dangerous. Personal friend of Adolf Hitler. And also a friend of Amin al Husseini, this one here, who was at the head of two Muslim divisions, SS divisions, the SS division Hanshar and the SS division Skanderbeg of Albanians, the other one of Bosnians and Palestinians, who did a real jihad in the Balkans in Europe, killing 400,000 people and uh, transporting them to the a horrific concentration camp of Jasenovac, about which people say it was even worse than Auschwitz. Well, it's a bit hard to imagine, but I mean, the way they were killed was very bloody in Jasenovac. Uh, you know, it's all one circle, you know. And here is this video uh, I made 10 years ago about the Swiss senator. It says, Geri Müller, Swiss senator. Uh, how we invited the Hamas uh, in the Swiss Parliament with more pictures. And here, you can see here the Swiss President uh, Herbert Hoover and here J. Edgar Hoover. And they all come out of Swiss descent of the name Huber. And I was uh, with my children. I got um, uh, threatened by this guy here, Hans Huber al Swissri who has also the same head, his name is also Huber, just like the president Herbert Huber and J. Ed Edgar Huber. You know, these people are extremely dangerous people and we must stop them now before it's too late. And if we don't do anything, it will be too late very soon because they, they're working towards the uh, World War Three. So you better watch these four videos because I'm not going to do it again, I. I'm tired. I've been working 13 years on all this. And as being a homeless, it's not easy at all. You know? So you watch this. So I, I don't put it in this video here. Right? On my channel, Gatsefrats, 10 years ago. You got all the information there. So this is the very same picture here in my channel before I took a screenshot so I could write down the names and everything in it. But the names are here, you know, François Genoux, uh, here's no name. Well, here's a name. And here, Senator Gary Muller. So, you know, I, so you just scroll down in the channel. So now I'll, I'll be going up here in my, in my channel. And here it is in the section videos on my channel, Gatsefrats. So you can all look it up yourself. Yes, 
Swaziland always has its dirty fingers in it somehow, as it is the so-called neutral base of Pharaoh, and for their pharaonic nobility only. For those who haven't seen my previous videos, here I explain in two Brightian films all the code words I use to avoid censorship. So here is part one entitled Censorship Vocabulary and here part two Forbidden Words. On my channel on Brighton, which you can see here, brighton.com, uh, my channel is this one, Gure, and then the second one, Gure. And for those new to my channel who don't understand how I got to um, the, the, the Pharaoh connection and the, uh, the Templar connection to Switzerland. So in the Swiss B series, which you can see here, I explain how we're being ruled by Pharaoh. Here you can see part one, and there are 11 parts. So this is part one here. Here's the title on my channel Gure here, the same channel. And if you watch here, in the description underneath the video, it says more. And here you got part two, part three, with the uh, the URL, and part nine, part 10, only part 11 I haven't put it in it yet, but 11 is also on the same channel here. So it says the New World Order is a conspiracy theory that hypothesizes, I should write it with an S boys, not with a Z, a secretly emerging totalitarian world government. It's not a conspiracy theory, as I explained to you. It's a very old thing by the Knights Templars when they founded Switzerland in 1291. They made the horizontal rule and called it the New World Order. And the Old World Order is the old vertical feudal rule by the king. So, and this was, um, it's in German. Uh, about how I got uh, arrested again and again by an anti-terrorist court. Here you see the Hamas in Swiss Parliament with their backgammon case, and here it says Amazon backgammon. Uh, when I saw the Hamas little red backgammon case in the Swiss Parliament in order to thank the Swiss government, for their generous development money to the combined Hamas al Fatah government of Gaza. I immediately wondered if Amazon also delivers to Gaza because I found the exact same Hamas backgammon case on Amazon. Just imagine Amazon taking the Hamas tunnels. Amazons in the Gaza metro, like that little Amazon, little red riding hood, dashing through the Gaza metro, with Hamas, their red backgammon case, with a public relations present for the Swamplers, and of course also returning with a lot of financial Swampler support for Hamas development. Funny though, because for a fanatic Muslim, games and gambling are strictly forbidden, meaning that the Hamas are not that pious after all. Actually, this picture was taken uh, at, in Gaza. Here's Gaza. Maybe the guys are hiding, you know, far away, or maybe they can't play in the center of town. I don't know. So here it says forbidden games of Islam. It looks like a like a funny game to to you know to have a to have a game you know like you know forbidden games of Islam, but they all do it because none of them has read the Quran. 
You know, the best thing, to my opinion, is not to pay too much attention to all the things they say, like in this part of the world, because it's 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 irrational. It's 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 contradictional. And by the way, I read the Quran, and yes, I also read the Bible, the Old Testament, and I even read twice the New Testament. But I'm not religious. I don't deny it and the existence of God, or Jesus, or Allah, or Muhammad, or whatever, or Moshiach, I don't deny it. But for me, I never met any of these guys, so I just don't know. And before I know, you know, I, I, well, I don't bet my horses on it, you know. So it says again, forbidden games of the Muslims. And I'd advise, you know, uh, since you're breaking the rules of Islam anyway, you know, why not have a beer next to it? You know, it's so much more fun to play backgammon with a beer, you know. And in general, in Gaza, a backgammon case is a multiple purpose utensil, either for past time or to end one's time. And of course, for personal PR gifts to Switzerland. I know for 100% sure that the Swamplers ordered the horrendous October 7th attacks, just like Hitler did his Munich coup d'etat, barely two months after his visit to Switzerland. I know you, Swissy. You won't fool me anymore. As I perfectly well know your history of crime, your history of bloodshed, and your history of deceit. So here again in Swiss Parliament, the Hamas here, and the Swiss Senator with the Beckhamen case, with the PR presence, public relations and all that. 2023, the October 7th attack in the JJ base. So here you can see the Gaza metro with a beer at the end of the tunnel, and it says, Allah created the beer's fermentation. You ever thought about that? So another point of contemplation for any fanatic Islamists is the fact that Allah created the fermentation process, creating beer, which is Allah's creation, which Allah created. So, in a critical moment of anger and murderous fantasies, one single beer will make you chill out, make a difference, relax, and put things into perspective. It also says 11 times in the Quran that Allah's creation is perfect, indicating it a sin and a blasphemy to chop off a chunk of your sexual organ, consequently mutilating Allah's creation, which also counts for the jaywalkers, the Nubians, and 97% of American men. You just don't mutilate God's creation. Final. So, this is a video I made like 11 years ago. Whoa. On my other channel, Gatsefrats, here's the title. Um, my videos don't pop up even if you give in the title. Because I'm completely, you know, sabotaged and shadow banning, as they call it, or shadow banned. Uh, from all sides, it's censorship, and they, they take away my videos, my channels, and my videos don't get shown. And, you know, so you have to scroll down in the, in the video section until you see this title and you see this image on my channel here. Gatsefrat with a little doggy doggy there. Next to Amazon's little red riding hood running through the Gaza metro 
with the red Hamas backgammon cases for international PR gifts. Jaywalkers also had to run from all Muslim countries after the foundation of the JJ base in 1948. And as usual, also here, did their usual runner. So in this Takia victim contest, it is not the jaywalkers kicking out the Philistines out of Palestine, but the other way around. So you better not believe too much of the Philistine Takia victim contest, because they're spreading 100% disinformation, sort of Takia and thousand and one dissimulations. I like facts and only do facts. And I don't like liars, eh, Swissy? This here, which you can see on the picture, and it's an original picture, was the Farhut pogrom of 1941 in Baghdad, when the Muslims teamed up with the Nazis and had two Muslim SS divisions in Europe by the names of Hanshar and Skanderbeg. During the Arab pogrom against jaywalkers, about 1,000 were killed, raped, and butchered. And 150,000 jaywalkers did their traditional runner. Now, only five are left in Iraq. So far, the misleading Philistine propaganda in order to set up the white race against the jaywalkers. We even played by the Western media, as usual, who also believe the Philistine propaganda of their Takia victim contest. So here you see the jaywalkers doing their runner again, and here as well, here the original picture. These are probably the jaywalkers waiting for their end. And it's, it's an original picture eh, with um, all the Muslims with their... This is the Hanjar, like the SS division, you know, the, the, the curbed sword, like Farhud in 1941, teaming up with the Nazis. And, um, well, I don't like Nazis, eh? So here you can read about the Farhut pogrom. And there were thousands of more pogroms in the uh, Muslim Arabic world, of which there are no pictures and we never heard of them because uh, they killed everybody. And we only hear something about it because... Um, Iraq was uh, ruled by the British Empire. That's the only reason. And who finally saved probably the um, what was left of the jaywalkers. You know, there was a suppression and 400 pogromists got killed, probably by the British. Right? Definitely not by the jaywalkers because they're good in doing runners. So about a thousand were killed and of the jaywalkers here it says by 1941 the approximately 150,000 iraqi jaywalkers played active roles in many as aspects of iraqi life including farming banking commerce and the government bureaucracy you know so you know they're not only bankers also farmers jaywalker farmers you know, and it's it's all as it says here, the German embassy and all this. It's it's all related to the Nazis. You know that they just uh, you know they, it got boosted their morale. You know of the um, here's another picture of it. Uh, the morale of the uh, Muslims uh, uh, got boosted, just like the uh, the Swiss inviting the Hamas into Swiss Parliament. They got boosted. You know. And then they started to say, you know, real ugly things and, you know, and they were feeling like, you know, we got the world behind us, you know.
in 1948, there were 160,000 Philistines in Palestine. And now there are 2 million Philistines living in the JJ base. So here you can see the JJ base. Here, this is the name of the JJ base. I can't, due to the censorship, I can't pronounce this name, you know. Like um, the Philistine citizens of the JJ base. So you know, I'm giving you some facts, you know. Yeah, you can see that. According, according to the JJ Bay's Central Bureau statistics, the Philistine Jaywalker population in 2023 was 2.1 million, representing 21% of the country's population. So one fifth of the JJ Bay's, they're Philistines, you know. I mean, well, you go and look all the uh, the false propaganda, you know, by the by the Western media about the poor Philistines and whatever, you know, and all the the false propaganda of the left wingers, and you know, here we would only do facts. I still don't choose any party, you know, for none of them. It's not my problem, really. But I like facts, and I don't like to be lied to, okay? So, well, you can, you can find it yourself and watch the whole thing. It goes on forever. In Morocco in 1948, there were 265,000 jaywalkers. Now, there are only about 2,000. In Algeria in 1948, there were 140,000 jaywalkers. Now there are only 50 left. Tunisia, 105,000 in 1948. Now 1,000 left. So here is the Wikipedia page of jaywalker exodus from the Muslim world. I hope I can still say Muslim. Is that okay, YouTube, with your censorship? Is that good? In our free Western democracy, eh? full of lies and disinformation. Um, yeah, you know, I, so you can read the whole thing yourself, you know. But this is what I want to show you here. Uh, the statistics, there we go. Yeah. The... It says, the Jay Walker population by country, 1948, 1972, and recent times. Here, here are the countries, country or territory. And also here, in 1948, there were between 758,000 and 881,000 Jay Walkers living in communities throughout the, the uh, let's say, Philistine world. Probably can't say the other word anymore, this world, word here. Today, that today there are fewer than eight thousand six hundred in some Philistine states, such as Libya, which was about three percent jaywalker. The jaywalker community no longer exists. In other Philistine countries, only a few dozen to a few hundred jaywalkers remain. So they're roughly one million. They got kicked out, you know. So. So here, I, I just shown, I just told you Morocco. This is here, 1948. Uh, here, 1972, and here the recent time. So in Morocco, there were 265,000 in 1948. Now there's about 2,000. Algeria, 140,000 in 1948, and now there's only about 50 left. Tunisia. 105,000 in 1948, and now there's only a thousand left. And we go on Libya, 35,000 in 1948, now that's zero. Iraq, I already told you, 140,000 140, in 1948, and it was in 1941, it was 150,000. 
Uh, now there's only five left. Egypt, 70 or 80,000, 948. Now there's only 100. Oh, that's even a, a lot, huh? Yemen and Aden, 63,948. Now there's only 50. Syria, 30,000 in 1948. Uh, now there's only 100. Lebanon, 20,000 jaywalkers in 1948. Now there's only 100. Bahrain, 600 jaywalkers in 1948. Now there's only 36. Sudan, 350. Now there's only zero. And, uh, so, um, Afghanistan, wow, there were 5,000 in 1948. I didn't know that. Huh? Interesting. Now, of course, there's zero. Uh, Bangladesh, unknown. Now there's about 100. Uh, Iran, there were 65,000. Well, now there's still 9,000 to 20,000. I knew about this. You know, in, in Iran, it's, um, it's, uh, it's different. It's still quite a lot. A lot of the jaywalkers, they, they went to the JJ base because they got a lot of dollars from the government to go back to the, um, to, um, to the motherland, so to speak. And uh, many of them in Iran, they said, well, we got no problems here and uh, we stay. So that's why in Iran, there's still quite a lot. Iran is different. You know? And in Pakistan, 2,000. Now there's only 900. In Turkey, 80,000. Now there, well, there's still 16,000 in Turkey. And in non Philistine Muslim countries, the total. Well, the rest here. Yeah. In 48 or 100, uh, are non Philistine Muslim countries. Well, I don't get this. Um, yeah, so the, and there's much more to read there, you know, but I'm not going to do the whole thing. So, um, these are the, uh, the official statistics, you know, and of course in the Takia, uh, victim, um, strategy, they're not going to tell you about it, you know. It's all disinformation they're giving, right? I don't like that. Um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't seek any party in one of the groups. I've got that much respect for the jaywalkers as they always do a runner and then they say to the whole of the world, why didn't you save us? Well, you know, it's not our duty to save them. You know, they can save themselves. Everybody has to save himself in a war. I've got not much respect for the Philistines either because because of their takia and their their in their strategy they they're giving they're giving out disinformation I, and I don't I so I, I probably can't use the word for that the the um, the harsher word which I would like to work, to use for it you know and I don't appreciate it so you know for me I don't seek any party I'm just going for the um for the facts, right? So, in reality, millions of jaywalkers kicked out of Muslim countries versus just a handful of Philistines kicked out of the JJ base or Philistine because of their own genocidal aggressions. They were looking for it. These are the real statistics. And the rest of the Philistine disinformation on social media is just a backgammon case full of takia dissimulation, trying to weigh down in this takia victim contest. Well, what else you have in that little red backgammon case, Mr. Hamas? And after the runner, the J runners try to seek a safe room. Same technique as Anna Frank did in her safe room. And we all know how that's ended, don't we now? After thousands of years, still the same ancient jaywalker techniques 
of doing a runner or crawl away in a safe room, proven to be useless ways of self-defense. So here to the left-hand side, you see here the steel, thick steel door of a kibbutz safe room. And here you see the, um, the, J, the, the J. Walker Bay's um, letters here. And here it says, so it says kibbutz safe room. And here it says Anna Frank's safe room, you know, with with the thick door. This is the original inside, you know, where the or the um, the safe room door of Anna Frank, which is leading there or maybe on this side, I don't know, to her room where she was hiding, just as today. So it's still the same thing going on, and it just doesn't work. To all people of the world, the only adequate self-defense response is related to this phrase here which you can read here i read it for you if the government doesn't trust me with my guns i don't trust them with theirs there's nothing you can do against granny not even with a red backgammon case in this video, I'll prepare you for the hunger times coming up, when Pharaoh will refuse you food, because you don't want to take their end times chip. And I'll prepare you for the consequence incarceration in Pharaoh's camps for those who refuse the chip. Or just when you get arrested and put in the slammer because you did nothing wrong, as Swissy deliberately did to me, being a political prisoner for five and a half years, of which one year in an isolation cell without enough oxygen. Where it makes me think of that movie where the sniper once said it's amazing how physically exhausting it can be to do nothing while he's waiting for the target for days and without the oxygen i couldn't digest and eat because you need oxygen to digest it needed a solution quick in order to survive and here the difference between a soldier and a warrior becomes apparent, as a soldier would never found the way out, as they are too dumbed down and too indoctrinated by the system, but where the spiritual aspect of the warrior got activated towards the solution. So it says warriors, warrior versus soldier. I let it read I let you read it yourself. Just punch pause. Warrior versus soldier. There are a lot of soldiers in the world. But there are not so many warriors. There was a little bit more, but I can't scroll down any further. First of all, I thought about the Japanese warriors of Okinawa who say harahachibu, meaning to eat only up to 80% full, because 80% sustain the man, the other 20% sustain the doctor and that you should never eat 100% full, which comes out of the Confucian teachings, to eat only two-thirds full, and leave one-third for air, which I've been knowing almost for all my life at that point, and only now became very critical knowledge. So here you can read about it here, Harahachibu, Japanese 
but it finally comes out of China and maybe even originally from India, from the Ayurveda. So here it says in China, the Confucian belief system dating back to the 5th century BC in China, um, in Chinese medicine, only eats 70% full and wear 30% less. Right, here's some more in the Zen. Harajibu. Anyway, a warrior should be lean and mean and not like a blown-up Hollywood action hero bodybuilder. Also, in the regiment, the soldiers used to be thin, small, skinny dudes, more focused on perseverance than strength, and mostly mental perseverance, to be able to function under all circumstances, instead of a Hollywood's screen warrior's one minute take under perfect conditions. Now here it says lean and mean. You see, give him a, a mean blow in the solar plexus or something. Then I compared my digestion with a car's carburetor that mixes the fuel with the oxygen to get the perfect combustion. And as there was hardly any oxygen in the cell, I needed to go down on the fuel and eat less at a time. So here you see a carburetor of a car. Here is the air going in. And on this side is the fuel going in. And it mixes the whole thing. And uh, here as well, the air coming in here. And here's the fuel coming in. And it mixes it here in a Venturi. And here you can see the combustion. So here it says, keep calm and clean your carb. So this is actually the low, the low carb diet. I call it the carburetor diet, which you can see here. So I hid the food after it got delivered through a little hole in the door and started to eat just a spoonful every half an hour without drinking anything which i finally did in the evening drinking that is drinking water thus i ate like a carburetor for a perfect combustion until 1800 hours and from then on only drank water onwards for the whole evening, but also the water I drank at half an hour intervals. Thus, I lost over 30 kilos over the three and a half months Swissy had put me in prison the last time in 2015, just before I finally left the entire damn country for good two months later. It is thus that I preserved my physical and most of all mental health while staring at the walls without oxygen for years inside a tiny Swiss prison cell for political prisoners. A warrior must be always ready to transform and adapt the given situation. So when food will be scarce in the end times because of a global civil war being enforced by the masters, with my carburetor diet, you will hardly need any food and not be hungry either. And if you have to go to jail for any kind of civil disobedience, with Homey Ross, his carburetor diet, you can beat the system inside of a tiny prison cell. So here you see the transformation. And here it says, transform, adapt. Also, all the happy drinks like coffee, tea, Coca-Cola, or alcohol, 
wouldn't do you any good in an isolation cell because all the new age era happy drinks are social drinks whereas you are alone in a cell and you don't necessarily want to socialize with the rapist in the cell to your left or with the murderer to your right as in prison you best keep to yourself and just drink water as in former days prisoners used to be put on a water and bread diet which was actual not even that bad so here it says no happy drinks in prison and don't take any sugars in an isolation cell because they will make you depressive anyway the intake of sugars will make the body to digest the sugars first and the real food so the nutritive values of your food won't get absorbed and in a prison cell this will literally drive you mad when i wrote that text about the differences between a soldier and a warrior well we could now add the carburetor diet to the warrior versus soldier text and a couple of more things i've told you in the meantime so you have to choose between here it says warrior versus soldier so this is actually the real low carb diet as carb is short for carburetor the carburetor diet so here it says the real low carb diet and carb stands for this thing here a carburetor and here as well is a carburetor where it says on the t-shirt i'm on a all carb diet so an all carburetor diet anyway i was in a very bad shape every time i left the swiss prison for political prisoners i was in a very bad shape both physically and mentally but due to the carburetor diet and some other techniques i was able to rebuild myself afterwards and survive it says swiss torture oxygen deprivation so for those who want to join me in the fight against evil and come to france i will teach you all the techniques and make a warrior out of you there are the four elements earth water fire and air food is earth and comes out of the earth and earth becomes fire when combusted and digested only if the air intake of the carburetor is well adjusted happy drinks give a false sensation of fire and actually kill the fire i can tell you you'll need a lot of that internal fire for the end times and i'll teach you that when you come and join me in the field so we can make an army to pay a visit to the octagon in the alps and here it says warrior versus soldier here it says the biblical snake and here the intestines and this is the true essence of the biblical snake where your intestines are like a snake with a big mouth on top of that which you need to control in order to tame the beast and become human because you can't just wolf down your scuff to a max 
like a predator and then fall asleep somewhere and be animal-like. Especially in our age of culinary abundancy, the inner snake needs to be controlled and be aware the abundancy will come to an end soon. Digesting also takes energy using the blood flow from somewhere else, making you sleepy when you eat like a lion. And especially in prison, you just can't afford to go to sleep and turn your back on them. And neither can you in the end times. So here you see the intestines, here you see the brain, and here it says digestion draws blood away. Too much food and happy drinks will destroy your intrinsic energies, killing the warrior inside. This is the true essence of the biblical snake. If you want to survive the end times, you must kill the snake first. To kill the snake in the sense of controlling it, of course. And after this metaphorical biblical snake, which we all have, now to the real beast of the Alps. Due to the 26 years of incessant Swiss terror, my children grew up without their father and have become strangers to me now, and vice versa. Five and a half years in Swiss prisons because of nothing. Had to run away from Switzerland from 2002 till 2004, and now for the last eight years being absent altogether for 15 years from my family. This happens when you criticize the Swiss beast and their Nazi banks and reveal their true history to the world. Then they will destroy you and your family, which is what Swissy deliberately did, and they even enjoyed it doing so. As the Swissies consciously and as a whole made this alliance with evil in 1291, while smiling to the whole world under the veil of neutrality and what not. So here you see William Tell from 1291. And it says, an apple a day keeps the Swiss away. Veritas temporis filia. Truth is the daughter of time. You will not silence me, Swissy, and you won't silence the truth either, Swissy.